Hello, uh, Joe Simhart here. It's August uh, 12th, I believe. Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in uh, to another episode of Cults in the Yacht Culture. Someone uh, asked me uh, on one of my other videos whether I believe there was anything like an authentic, uh, genuine religion and um, that you know, am I skeptical of all religions, meaning that they're basically all wrong or whatever? Uh, all right, so I answered uh, in, in a text, but let me answer that more fully here. The, the question is just badly framed. I mean, you should never ask anyone, what do you think is a genuine religion? Uh, a lot of my clients in the past, you know, hundreds of them have asked me after a successful exit counseling when they left the cult that they were in for years, or whatever, they would look at me and think that I know all the answers, or some of them anyway, and say, well, what do you think is the true religion? And I would say, well, that question is what got you into trouble to begin with. You have to look at the question, you know, what are you actually asking? Because there are people that will take advantage of answering a question like that. All right, so let's look at some definitions. Um, so the question was whether I believe there was such a thing as a genuine religion. So. Genuine is, uh, means actually addressing the alleged or apparent attribute or character, uh, not spurious or counterfeit. All right. So and if we go to uh, a similar word, authentic. By the way, genuine comes from um, the Latin. Uh, and, for instance, our word genuflect. It... it, it Genu is knee, flex is flex, we flex the knee. But it also means something to the fact that um, uh, it's called a gignere, which means that the, a Roman father in ancient times would put their infant on their knee to indicate this is authentically um, my child. You know, so it has a deeper meaning in terms of authenticating something. Um, well, actually, we're genuine, I'm sorry. Uh, authentic just means verifiable, and it comes more from the uh, Greek. And, and it means uh, worthy of trust, resilience, or belief, having claimed and verifiable origin or authorship. So we know who the author is. It makes it authentic. The word author, authentic, obviously come from the same thing. So, yeah. You know, the cult I was in, Church Universal and Triumphant, claimed to be the authentic, the genuine religion coming from a hierarchy of ascended masters who knew the truth because they had achieved through many lifetimes of, of uh, uh, trial and error and, and whatever, their ascension and their ascension put them in touch with higher beings and higher realms of truth and they could filter that down to us through messengers or psychics or prophets here on, on earth. Well, you know that story. It's a very hierarchical system in order to find truth, and you really have to trust the hierarchy that you're genuflecting to um, in order to discover what, what is true. So one of the, the problems that comes in is, again, something that I've talked about here often in terms of the art culture, and it has to do with gnosis, with that deep inner knowing uh, which doesn't demand any faith. The word pistis, Re, re, um, is something that's connected to, to faith in, in, in the Greek. And so gnosis means something which is naturally known, something deep within. It's not something we have to construct and agree on, which is what a faith or an orthodoxy is. We agree on it. So let's look at this in a different way. You know, again, because if somebody asks you if something is genuine or authentic, well, you know, think about this. All right, so is this an authentic, genuine mushroom? Well, no, but this is. I just tore this out of the ground in my yard. I'm not sure what kind it is, but it's embedded in one of the roots of a rotting tree. So can they both be authentic? It depends on definition. This is naturally authentic. It comes from nature. You can go back into biological history and find the evolution of mushrooms and what they do, and, and we think that this is a true object in nature. It's authentic, 
you know, it's consistent w with what we consider real and useful and, uh, and all of that. So this can be authentic. It could be a genuine alabaster carved mushroom. You know, so in other words, Gnosis, this comes from within the earth. It's produced, it's true as it is. It's connected to the to life source, to being, to God, or whatever you want to call the source of life. This is more like pistis. It's an object that's like the mushroom, but different. But this is, this is what's really um, complicating this. This is an object that doesn't change over time. And it will probably stay this way for aeons, for thousands of years, unless it's melted or crushed or whatever. But it has an eternal sense about it. You know, we carve things in stone to give the sense of eternity, our idols, our gods, our Jesus, our Buddha. You know, so this is more of a ideal platonic mushroom in eternity, so to speak. This one will live, die, and come back again. It resurrects, you know, so it's more vegetable. And so this also tells the story of some religions which see eternity in a resurrection, in a continual resurrection of the self in some way or another. Some people call it reincarnation, metempsychosis, you know, all kinds of other words for this. So is this more genuine to represent the reality of a mushroom? Is the platonic ideal, which doesn't exist in the real world, is that what's genuine? Is that what is authentic? This is temporal. Some religions like the Hare Krishna that are dualists would say, well, this is nothing. This is just ephemeral. It's Maya. It's something which contains the spark of life, the, uh, the, the, the essence of life, which, which makes it what it is. And, and if you take off the covering, it disappears. There is no mushroom, you know, as there is no self in Buddhism, there is no Atman. The Atman is more represented by this. It's more permanent, it's more in touch with the ideal. All right, so you can see where I'm going here. You can say this is on inauthentic mushroom, and you can say this is authentic, but what do you mean by those words, by genuine and authentic? So if anybody asks you, you know, what is the true religion? What is, the, what is a genuine religion? you have to turn it around and say genuinely good or genuinely bad. What are you asking? You know, so there's qualifications. There are some genuinely bad religions, you know, and I'll name one, Scientology. It's just not a great religion. And there's a lot of reasons for that. There might be some genuinely good religions. You know, we, we can point to like ancient Coptic Christianity, which was very culturally bound. It had its own rules. People agreed on it and it satisfied the needs of, of the immediate culture. And you could say that is genuinely good for that culture. It might not be good in translation to say uh, Inuit culture in Alaska, which has a whole different worldview about how, how the world works, you know, through a more of an animistic uh, uh, point of view. But leaving all that aside, both those religions, the Inuit, the Coptic in ancient times could be genuine and genuinely good and we have some modern religions and occult movements which we can point to because of their behavior and their activity toward the social surrounding uh, environment. We can say they're genuinely bad or at least tending toward being bad and refuse to self-correct. That's one of the, the things which I look for in, in any healthy religion or genuine or whatever you want to call it. Uh, is it willing to self-correct when errors are pointed out? Or is it going to double down and accuse its um, skeptics of attacking them, of persecuting them? You know, those are the questions you have to look at. Okay, so again, if anybody asks you what's genuine, what's authentic, think about the mushrooms and maybe it'll help you uh, trigger a conversation. Thank you for listening and enjoy your day. Take care.